Good morning, Oak Orchard. I hope you guys are well, staying safe at home. We all miss you very much, but we are very excited to bring you uh, another Sunday morning of worship. Um, we just, we pray for each and every one of you right now that sitting in your home, that you'd be able to feel the presence of the Lord just flow over you during this time of worship. Just use it as a, as a moment of meditation on, on what the Lord has for you right now. So we are so excited. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. How many of you know that today? Um, you know, fear and anxiety, whatever you may be feeling, just thank the Lord and you'll see how that attitude changes. So it is a good thing. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto the Lord.
can admit that our chains have been broken by Jesus at some point. If they haven't been, you need to pray for God to break the chains that bind us each and every day. There's an old song, a hymn. I love this song because it talks about the greatness of God. Uh, the first verse goes, Oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe first display. We can see that on a daily basis. If we can only look forward, look out that window instead of being so um, tied to our homes or that feeling of being tied. But understand that God is great. He's great in nature. All we have to do is look out the window and we can see the greatness of God. Would we'll you sing this whole hymn with us? Oh Lord my
Well, good morning, Oak Orchard, and I have a special treat for you this morning. Pastor Stan, as most of you know, and if you don't, uh, he's my dad. And he was uh, the pastor of Oak Orchard Assembly of God since 1962. My mom and dad came to this church in 1961. Uh, they incorporated in 1962 as an Assembly of God church. And Dad has been pastor here ever since. Uh, when I became the senior pastor in 2002, uh, Pastor Stan uh, became the pastor emeritus, pastor at large, if you will. And he's just going to share with you today from the Word of God. And I'm so delighted to uh, have him here with us. Uh, as you see, uh, he's got oxygen uh, now, uh, keeping him fired up and ready to go. As you all know, he is the Energizer Bunny. And the batteries maybe are going down a little bit, but not all the way. Uh, so he's still pretty good, pretty spry. He's still getting up every morning, and, and God is, is continuing to bless him. Yes. Uh, when I was thinking about uh, what we were going to do this morning and uh, having Dad have an opportunity to share, because quite frankly, we don't know how many more times we're going to be able to do this. Um, well, I'm going to live to be 100, so... You're going to live to be 100? Easy, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, we got a few more years left. Uh, but Dad had, uh, during this uh, uh, virus that we've got going around and being sequestered in our homes, uh, kind of turned me on to puzzles, uh, again, Diane and I. And the last one uh, that he gave to us, I actually think came from my sister Julie, uh, but it was a Thomas Kincaid picture of the Wizard of Oz. And there we see uh, Dorothy and the Scarecrow and the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion on the yellow brick road. And they were heading for the Wizard of Oz, which was told to them uh, could meet all of the needs uh, that they had. And, uh, of course, we know that uh, Dorothy needed to get back home where she was from. And, and the Scarecrow needed some, uh, or I guess that the Tin Man needed a heart. The cowardly lion needed courage, and the scarecrow, what did he need? Corn, I think. I think he needed, uh, I don't know what it was. But anyways, it was the uh, Wizard of Oz that was going to take care of all that. Well, they were following a yellow brick road, but my dad has been known uh, to be the red letter pastor, and he believes that the red letter uh, will lead us to the one uh, that can help us in all of our situations. And so I'm going to let Dad kind of share how he got to be the Red Letter Pastor. Why don't you tell us, Dad? Well, in 1993, at Medina Memorial Hospital, I had a massive heart attack. I died and went to paradise. And there Jesus commissioned me he sent me back, which I did not want to come back, but he sent me back with a mandate. He said, my words are not being taught. Amos said, there's a famine in the land, not of bread or water, but of the word of God. And I commission you to go back. That is your calling, your mandate. And so that's how it came to be by Jesus himself. And the red letters being in, in the Word of God, if you have a red letter edition of the New Testament, they are the words yeah, of Jesus. All the words of Jesus. And then it starts out that, as I search the scriptures, he said, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. So the red <laughs> brick road, I guess, <laughs> red brick road, leads to red letter road leads to life. Yes, that's what he sent me back to declare. You would pass for death unto life, if you follow. My words are spirit and life. And then all of the, what we have interpreted, the judgment and all of this, has all been committed, he said, unto me of my Father. All judgment. Father judges no man, but he has committed all judgment unto the Son. Therefore, on the red brick road, you'll find out what his judgment is for all mankind, such as that none would be lost, all that would be saved, that none perish, 
Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and the glory of the Father. Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11. As was foretold of Father God in Isaiah 45, 23. I swear by myself that every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall swear or confess. This is right and I'm never taking it back. I didn't know these things were there. So as, as we shared and as you shared with me this, this red letter and, and why we should rest and seek after the words of Jesus after the, uh, during the transfiguration, why don't you share uh, that time when, when uh, God said, this is my beloved son. He was on the Mount of Transfiguration, and then uh, a voice came out of the cloud, and it said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And so Father God is declaring that he put all of his heart and words into his Son Jesus, to declare to the world, all mankind, and he brought me in to be a part of it. And that's, I have no choice to go except what we relate to that. There's many trails that relate. In fact, all trails lead to Christ. There's only one that leads to the Father. No man can come to the Father but by me, he said. So it's quite important and he also gave a promise no one can come to me except the father draw father says i've drawn everyone well it's been all this stuff has just come out new to me and i've been re preaching it for 50 some years since 1955 but the real evidence of it where the rubber meets the road, where we walk and live in life has become a reality. Much more than ever before. And I want to declare. I, 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 as I looked at that as a scripture, uh, when God said, hear ye him, speaking of Jesus, that the very first thing that Jesus said, uh, after he told his disciples to listen to him, uh, he said in verse 7, and Jesus came and touched them and said, arise, and be not afraid. I thought that was pretty amazing because right now in a time in our country and even in our world, there seems to be a lot of fear over what this coronavirus can do to us. For sure. Uh, and we understand that it takes many of them to death, okay? Thankfully, the percentage is, is, is very low, that 98% of the people are recovering, but yet that doesn't change the fact that, that people are afraid but the fact that Jesus told them, don't be afraid, I think, uh, and maybe you can share a little bit about this, that Jesus was telling them, listen, I've got this. Listen to my words. Obey my commandments. And I can take care of every situation that you find in your life. On the red brick road, we come to Jesus and he gives the formula. That perfect love casteth out all Fear. Thank you, Jesus. And it comes from Jesus. And he says, through the words of the Apostle Paul, my love is perfected through you, mm. through mankind. That brings us into it. Not some remote angel. It brings us into the formula. In fact, he brings all mankind into the formula. All mankind. He uses the word all which we've been prone to kind of eliminate certain groups, which he did, and we have to readjust our thinking to the all. I would say that um, you would consider the world to be in crisis. Uh, the world has been completely turned upside down uh, because of the situation that we find ourselves in this pandemic. But there has always been crises in the world and in our lives, as it was uh, with the disciples. And we see many times that Jesus not only allowed those crises to occur, but also maybe had a part in, in, in making them happen so that he could teach us something. Yeah. 
And I'm reminded of the story when Jesus uh, took the disciples uh, out onto the lake and a great storm arose. You want to kind of tell us about that and, and how the words of Jesus have such power? It was interesting that when they left shore, it says that they took Jesus just as he was. I read from that that there's no preparation for calamity. It just happens. Uh, some have expressed, why do bad things happen to good people? I don't know. Calamity just happens. Like the rain falls on the just and on the unjust, calamity can fall on anyone. And that being said, uh, Jesus, all his words are true, and yea and amen. With calamity, in calamity, without calamity, in joy, in peace, in comfort, he has not changed. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's the first words of comfort, which I have here that he was appointed in 61, chapter 61 of Isaiah. It gives, I have 10 points that he was appointed to do. I have mine, I'm glad they're not that many, but <laughs> that's all on the red brick road of Jesus. So are filled in. So Jesus uh, went out of the boat with his disciples, and obviously it's assumed that they didn't go out into a storm, that the storm came up while they were on the, the lake. And it's important to note that there were other boats on the lake as well. Uh, and, of course, Jesus was sleeping in the boat while the disciples uh, were experiencing this storm, and the boat was taken on water, and they were getting very nervous. They were even thinking that they were going to perish because they woke Jesus up and said, Hey, Lord, we perish. We, we perish. We're dying here. Well, what was Jesus' response, and why? Tell me. Well, I'm interviewing you. I want to hear what you got to say. Well, you know how it is when you wake up from sleep. <laughs> yes. He, he stood up, rebuked the waves of the sea and the wind, and it calmed immediately. Impossible. Yeah. We have to say it's a miracle. I know yes. with us, our calms, our fears, and aren't calmed instantly. Sometimes it's a whole lifetime as we learn and we grow. Uh, and sometimes we're told, well, if you follow Jesus, all your problems will be over. I have another suggestion. Your problems are just starting. You're going to have to live a miracle that's lived by a miracle-working God. What we cannot do, God can do. What's impossible with man is not impossible with God. And so, uh, we'll come back to you, but I have worked up a little thing about when people through uh, uh, AAA, which I have, when you break down, you call AAA, and they come and rescue you. Um, on your car, uh, AAA. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I kind of put on this, uh, Jesus is uh, the AAA appointed my father in our life. Probably has... Three red letters on, on his tow truck, right? AAA, three yeah. red letters? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, here's the, here's the thing that I've worked up. Number one, you call. You make a call. Psalms 91.15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. How about that? Well, he's not available. We'll transfer you over to some... Never happens with Jesus. Number two, Jesus will come. John 14, 23. We will come unto him. Jesus always does what he says he will do. Always. Number three, Jesus will give us his words concerning this situation. He'll analyze it and give us his word, John 14, 21. And 
my Father God will come unto him and manifest myself to him. We will manifest ourselves. I will give you the challenge. I will give you the situation. Not blaming, never asking why you got in the ditch, why you got into this mess. But others ask, I don't ask that. I just analyze the situation to get you out. Number four, Father God through Jesus will give us the answer for the situation. Romans 11, 4. But what saith the answer of God? There is a proper way to pull a car out of the ditch, and there's an improper way. Uh, the professionals know the proper way. When I had the Buick drawn out of the ditch, he hooked on. There's a special eye situation there. It's the only place you hook on to that Buick. Somebody hooked it on with just a hook and, and the bumper rip, ripped it right off. Ripped out in there. So that's improper. This is not a professional. Whoever pulled this car before. Jesus knows how to pull us out without damaging us. Mm -hmm. He's pretty awesome. He said, I didn't come to kill people. I came to give life. So then, number five, we're going to return home to Father's home, safe and sound. After we get out, we're going to return home to via the red road, the words of Jesus, John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, he was speaking here to Thomas, I, Jesus, am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Mm. I will lead you home. I know now you're lost. That's how you got into probably this predicament. You, you didn't know this road, you didn't know that curb was there, and you went off. I'll lead you home. Well, yeah. that's one of the great advantages that we have of Jesus, that he is the beginning and the end. He knows the beginning and the end. He knows our situation, uh, like you said, and he knows how to handle the situation. He's called the great shepherd. He leads his sheep in and out. That's another. So calling Jesus then, uh, the, the, the AAA guy, if you will, um, is that good for today? For us today? For those of us that are, are struggling in life? For those of us that fear uh, death? Uh, for those of us that uh, have issues that we don't know where to turn? Is Jesus the one that we should call in 2020? I'll be with you always. So heaven and earth pass away, my word shall not pass away. The answer is yes. He'll always be there. So we return home. Now I wonder what kind of a greeting I'm going to get when they see the fender all bashed up. Hmm. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I'll lead you home. Oh, to Father's house, to Father. Really, yes. Boy, when Dad sees that, oh, calamity's going to fall in. I'll never be able to use the car again, and so on. These things are going through his mind, very possibly. Malachi 2.10, Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Psalms 103. Know ye all that Father God, He is God, He it is, He that hath made us, not we ourselves, we are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Nothing's going to change because the car is bashed up. Doesn't change God. Doesn't change the attitude of God towards His creation. Mankind doesn't change it. Psalms 127.3 Lo, children, but they're the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. He's dealing with his own self when he deals with you. Oh. Well, you think this person that's leading me home, Jesus will kind of patch things up before we get there. He's called our intercessor. Mm. He says, well, any attitude I have 
is the Father's. Nothing needs to be said. His will is my will. My will is His will. I'm bringing you to fulfill those things that I told you about. Uh, Dad, getting back to your story of Jesus in the boat uh, and the disciples uh, woke him up and they said, Master, care us not that we perish. They, they felt like Jesus didn't care, didn't know. Uh, he's sleeping through the storm. Didn't care that they were, they were dying. At least that's the implication that I get. Uh, from that scripture. And it, it, he didn't say anything at that moment. It just said that he arose and then he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea. Now he spoke. Now you're talking about the words of Jesus and the power the that are in the words the of this. They are spirit and they are life. And Jesus said, peace be still. Prior to all this, he declared the Father, Father God, all power is given unto me from Father God in heaven and earth and under the earth. Now if they're seeing it. And we all need to power. believe that, don't we? We, we need, need to believe, believe it. that. And we need to believe it in the middle of the storm. And, and the yeah. disciples, you know, they were in real time learning who Jesus was and coming to the full knowledge of who he was and the power that he had. And we have the advantage of reading this story uh, today here in 2020, yet still some of us won't believe or believe that God cares or that he can intervene or that he can bring peace into our lives, even in the middle of this coronavirus situation. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, we try to take it into our own control and, and try to get peace in our own way. And it's impossible because we don't have the power to bring that kind of peace. But, but Jesus does. What they said, care so not that we perish. Here's our modern day vernacular. Where's God when you need him? You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. If you ever said it, I have. Where's God when you need him? Same thing as what he said. We don't care. Yeah, and that sometimes is something we have to fight. He does, and we need the red brick road to stand on. He careth for you. He careth for his sheep. He leads them in and out into green pay. Yes, he does. I don't understand all of his care. I don't understand medical science. All I know is go to the hospital, the doctors, and they care for me. I don't even, can't even spell the stuff that they write out. Don't understand their language. But I can understand their care. Another part of this story that, that we were discussing that we thought was pretty amazing uh, was that in the middle of this storm was not just uh, this uh, boat that Jesus was in. Uh, but it said, and when they had sent out, uh, sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was, as you said, in the ship, that was Jesus. And there were also with him other little ships. So the implication is that all these other little ships were in the middle of this storm as well. But when Jesus said, peace be still, peace came over that whole lake, not just in that spot where Jesus was, but everyone received the blessing of the word of God that were in the middle of that storm, whether they believed in Jesus or his power or whatever. Jesus encompasses it. When he says, peace be still, he can bring peace to everybody that is in the middle of a storm. You know, it was said of Jesus in his first five, six, and seven of Matthew, that's where all his new commandments were given. When he finished, uh, here's what came out of those that heard him, Matthew 7, 28. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. As they were not still astonished at what we're learning about Jesus and his words and his life and fulfilling Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. Uh, 
how God anointed him. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus, because Father God hath anointed me to do ten things. Preach good tidings, not condemnation. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Send not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world will be saved. Number two, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. He takes us to the hospital. Good. Number three, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Mm -hmm. Now we are in bondage to so many things. God wants to set us free from that bondage through his blood. Yes. His shed blood on the cross. Especially to buy breaking chains, those that are in bondage to addictions. Addictions, Certainly that, whatever. Uh, most of us are in bondage to our own self. Mm -hmm. The opening of the prison to them that are bound. We're bound by certain things that we had nothing to do with. Sometimes it's a handicap. Sometimes it's a bad name that's been forced. Whatever happens in life, we're bound by that. And it affects our whole life. Sometimes it's just by a nasty word that we heard from some of our people in, when we were going to school. Mm -hmm. They call us the dads that stayed with us all our life. Bullying, like the bullying. Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we've been bound by that. Mm -hmm. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That is his calling. Then he explains that. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Yes. Now is the time. There's also a time at death and after death. But no, I need to say now is the acceptable time. Because John 10.10 10 says, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior and following his words, lead us into the abundant life now in this life on planet Earth. It's, it's been borne out recently that no man knows what a day may bring. We can't take tomorrow uh, for granted, can we? Uh, we don't, yes, you're 87 years old, Dad, and you've had a, a good long life, but uh, tomorrow something could happen, and, and, and we may not be here, and now is the, set, the time of salvation. You know, I don't think the greatest pandemic in the world is the coronavirus. I believe the greatest pandemic in the world is sin. And you know what? Sin always leads to death if it's not taken care of. Now, the coronavirus, if you get infected, 98% of the people are recovering from that. You don't recover from the virus of sin that is in the world. We're born in to sin. But red letter, because of Jesus, because of his shed blood on the cross of Calvary, because he loves us, and has mercy on us, has provided the antidote for this pandemic called sin. And it came through his sacrificial mm. shedding of his blood and giving of his life on the cross of Calvary. He took the sin. He became sin. He who knew no sin became sin so that we might be healed from the pandemic of sin. Sin requires a surgery. A surgical procedure that only Jesus can do. He takes the sin out of us, takes it unto himself, and he disposes of it. In fact, he said that he hath destroyed sin in the flesh. Amen. But you know what, Dad? When we receive Christ, uh, and I pray that all of you uh, come to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Uh, a great and wonderful thing happens uh, that he forgives us of our sins. Uh, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He presents us to God the Father as blameless. And, and, and believe me, in my case, that is really, really amazing. It's not, in most of our cases, that's a really uh, amazing thing. That, that he presents us as, as blameless. We're not blameless. We're guilty. But said. Jesus justifies us. But he gives us his righteousness. I am made to you. Sanctification, righteousness, justification, salvation. Not of ourselves. Not of our... He is ours. All him. What a wonderful 
wonderful thing. You know, people say, if there is a God, why does he allow so much suffering uh, in the world? Why would he allow the coronavirus to even take, if there's a God, if he really loves uh, mankind? But we live in this fallen world that God created. And because of sin, there's death and sickness, okay? You know, if you try to figure that out, you'll become an agnostic. Yeah. Now, who can know the mind of God? It's beyond finding out. So when you try and you discuss all of that, you throw up your hands and say, I don't believe in him. Mm -hmm. That's the way out. I don't believe in him. Does it change what we believe, whether God exists or not? Can we believe him out of existence? However, there's a little something in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. We say, well, it's our will. You can choose. And he has to knuckle into our will. Think again. It is Father God who directs the will of mankind to will and to do of his good pleasure. He takes the authority over our will. So that's denied in most religious circles called the free will of man. That it could, it overrides. Just God as, just as Jesus uh, lowered himself and became man and allowed uh, himself to feel all of the things that we feel uh, like a hunger. He became fully man. Uh, he also can uh, control our will and make us or force us to do whatever he wants us to do. But also at creation, he gave man uh, free will that you're talking about so that we would accept him, receive him, and love him, not because we're forced to like a robot, but because out of the desire of our heart, you know, we, I, we, I, we love I, him. I want to challenge that word forced. I don't believe it's applicable. Uh, what is, is the old song we used to sing. He does not compel us to go against our will. He just makes us willing to go. He makes our will willing. Yes, and then when does that happen? That happens when, when we receive Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And we have a new and willing heart to serve God. We have a new and willing heart not to hurt him and bring sorrow to him by sinning. He renews our mind. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind that I, I hope, Dad, that every day of my life, my will becomes more like God's will, that God's will would continue to, to flow through me and that I don't reject what he has for me and say no to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you're not going to make me do this or make me do that. And the, it won't. The Holy Spirit is gentle. Okay. Uh, so yeah, when God regenerates us and when we are a new cre creature in him, oh, hallelujah, God help mm -hmm. our will to be more like the will of God. Because His what is his will? His will is that we might have life and that we might have it abundantly. His will is that we would share the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel. And that's what we want to share with you today. We want you to know today that God has never left. God has never forsaked us. He's always been there. He desires to have relationship with us. He wants us to choose him today. He doesn't want us to fear. Like he told the disciples uh, in, in the boat, uh, he says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? The disciples were just learning not to fear, that they could have faith in Jesus, that he has a plan for our life. And if we will love him, if we will follow him, even in the midst of every crisis in our life, it's going to work out for our good because we love him and because we're called according to his purposes. Then his final commandment, a new commandment I give unto you. Here we go. I love this. That one. you love one another as I have loved you. There's the answer for fear to be gone. Perfect love casteth out all fear. 
and also love towards our fellow man, instead of us planning how to do them bad, changes everything. And that's where part of the abundant life comes in. We see them as a God's creation. If we had time, God created all things. He created man. They're his creation. He's the father of us all. It says so here, I read that already. He is the father of us all. And when we disrespect his creation, we're disrespecting God. I don't care what color they are. I don't care how bad they are. If his name is Hitler or who. We have to recognize we're dealing with God's creation. If there's any discipline, Father God says, that's my business. Whom I love, I chasten. It. It's not your business. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need to really guard against judge becoming God the judge. Yes, and allow Jesus uh, to allow Jesus to uh, to be that judge. We know uh, as we're following along in the words of Jesus, and I'd like to share some some red letter uh, with us, Dad. And we've discussed this uh, that uh, as Jesus was preparing to raise Lazarus from the dead and prove to the world that he has power uh, to to resurrect. Uh, Jesus said uh, to Martha, uh, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He was talking to Martha, but he's talking to us today. Do we believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? And that if we would just believe in him, that we would never die. You'd say, well, never? Is that right? Well, let's put it in context. Yes, it, it is appointed unto man uh, once to die. This physical body, we're all going to die. So if you think you can avoid death uh, by putting a mask over your, your face, uh, you're sadly mistaken. We're all going to die sometime. It's just a matter of when and how. But when Jesus said uh, that you would have life and you would have it eternally, that's just exactly what he meant. Because when this body, this shell, passes away, we have already passed from death unto life because of Jesus Christ. So I, I would that uh, all of us today would uh, consider uh, that we uh, take real care to consider uh, the pandemic of sin in the world and in our lives and to be delivered from that and to be healed from that through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Dad, I, I want to thank you so much uh, for sharing uh, with us today because uh, it really means a lot for someone that's been through so much, shared so much Jesus, shared so much red letter. That, that it really carries uh, weight with the pe people that hear uh, your words because you're speaking the words of Jesus. And, and as pastors, aren't that what we're called to do? Not our words, but we're to share uh, the red letter, the, the, the words of, of Jesus, because that's where uh, life is. We've been so blessed in our time to have this recorded, his words in red, to make it easy for I'm going through right now through the entire New Testament and just writing down the words of Jesus. The, not all the details in or why this reward. He made a statement of life. I'm writing it down. I'm in Matthew right now. I'm going through all of it. It's interesting how it pops out. Don't get lost in the drama. Get carried away in these words that have spirit and life. That's where I am, and I'm glad to share it with anybody that will. And it just, and then I'm often asked the question, what about this, what about that? In Acts 1, 7, Jesus said, it's not for you to know hmm. the times and the seasons that the Father has put in his own hands. And we need to accept that. They write books about the end of all of this. He said, there's things. He said, I'm not going to tell you. 
into Daniel, the last book of Daniel. He said, these are prophecies of the end time, but seal up the book. They're not to be revealed until the last of the last days. And I believe we're there. And they're starting to be revealed, just like what's happening here. And when you see what's going on in the world, and this pandemic is a worldwide thing, and it, doesn't it kind of start to feel like we're, we're, we're getting closer uh, to, to the day when Jesus is going to come back and... and uh, Take his church to be with himself? I think the Holy Spirit puts that in the heart of all people. That uh, it could happen to happen in Paul's day. And that's why today is the day of salvation, isn't it? Today is the day of salvation. We don't, we, we don't want to wait another day. We don't want to wait another day uh, to accept Christ and, and to allow his love to permeate. Uh, Pastor, would, could you just... Uh, uh, close us, uh, lead us in a, in a prayer uh, for the people that are viewing uh, and, and beyond. Just, just bring us to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, help us to receive your word with joy and gladness. Yes, Lord Jesus. And as we think on these things to follow your word, yes, Jesus. Give us the understanding. Yes, it yes. only comes from you. The natural man cannot. It only comes from you. We ask you to do so. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dad. Uh, he loves you. Uh, we love you. And uh, I know you, you love Dad and, and you care for him uh, deeply. So God bless all of you. Have a great and wonderful day.